Well, grace and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to this edition of Spotlight on Music. I'm your host, Bishop Andre Woods. And listen, friends, uh, we're in for a wonderful fellowship and a great interview tonight with one of God's best who's ever done it in the person of Dr. Dello Thatford out of St. Louis, Missouri. But as we prepare uh, to share with Dr. Thatford, listen, I want you to like and share, start your own watch party, Join us tonight, tag your friends, get in on the comment section, share, let us know you're there, send some thumbs up, some hearts, let us know you're breathing, not there, all over Facebook, all over wherever you might be listening, we certainly want to welcome you to share with us tonight. Listen, uh, let every musician in the country, the world know that we're going to be talking about music, sacred music, we're going to be talking about church music, we're going to talk about the music industry. We're going to talk about the past, the present, and the future right here on the Spotlight on Music. I want to introduce my guest by sharing some information from his bio tonight. Uh, a great friend of mine, I thank God for meeting Dr. Thatford some many years ago, and we're going to talk about that. I think he probably go wonder how I remember all this stuff, but I, I got something in store for Dr. Dello Thatford tonight. Delo Thatford is a teacher, arranger, noted composer, and conductor extraordinaire. He currently serves as minister of music at the Shalom Church City of Peace. An employee of the Jennings School District, he serves as vocal music teacher and director of performing arts. He has been an educator for uh, some 46 years and 40 of those years service at the St. Louis public school system. Dello previously worked for St. Louis public school district as Dean of Arts and the Central Visual and Performing Arts High School. He has to his credit positions as adjunct professor of music of the University of Missouri. Oh my God, uh, University of Missouri in St. Louis, Missouri, vocal coach, for the Southern Illinois University Edwardsville, music director uh, of the Persona Players, chairman of the music department at Roosevelt High School. He also served as musical director for the Black Repertory Productions of The Wiz, The Train Is Coming, and vocal arranger for Ain't Misbehaving. Additionally, his musical scores and arrangements include uh, the Black Jesus Christ Superstar, Tamarines to Glory, and Alice in Wonderland. He currently, he is currently music director of the Youth Rally of the National Congress of Christian Education of the National Baptist Convention. He was also music chairman of the 1999 Billy Graham Crusade in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, this is his words. It is my desire to create an environment where students receive an exemplary academic and artistic education that showcases their talents and prepares them to meet the challenges of our dynamic global society. Oh, praise God. Listen, friends, I want everybody to get in the comment section 
and help me welcome our brother, our friend, the one and only Dr. Dello Thatford to Spotlight on Music. Welcome, my friend. How are you? I Bishop? am blessed, man, to have you here live with us <laughs> on Spotlight on Music. What a well, joy. What a it joy. is indeed a joy. It is indeed a joy. Listen, I am so honored uh, to just be in your presence, who uh, you have been probably the mentor for many of us down through the years, what real church music is all about. And it has come from both you and, <laughs> you know, Dr. Nix. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, you know, I, I got to pause right there, put a pin in that while we, you mentioned uh, Pastor Nix. Uh, I tell people all the time, they, they say, man, we, when we close our eyes, we can't tell the difference. I said, well, I thank God for that because, you know, I tell people even now, I am living, Delo, on the residual of being connected to Charles Nixon St. James. Oh my. I'm living on that. You hear me? I'm living <laughs> on that right now. My musical career would not have been or is what it is. Uh, and I tell people, I am because he was. And I mean, he took me under his wing and he exposed me to everybody from James Cleveland uh, to everybody. And then there were others uh, who, who uh, poured into me, starting with my grandfather. But um, Man, I, I appreciate you mentioning that because I tell people we are where we are, but lest we forget from whence we've come and who helped open those doors for us. I praise God for that. Yes. If, if, if I could just add right there, um, it was because both you and Reverend Nix, how the musicians like myself and many, many of us across the country try to prepare ourselves adequately for the church society of today. And the thing that I uh, marveled at is that you guys always was relevant. I mean, it, it, it always seemed new but not only new, but it was appropriate. And that's a word that is not happening in today's church music world. Yeah. You, you, you know, you, you, you hit the nail on the head on some of the stuff I wanted to ask you already. Because, uh, well, 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 let's go back. Let's go back. Because I want to get this in, in case those who know you or met you midstream or after your name became household word in music through the conventions and through the gospel music workshop and throughout all of St. Louis and even here in the Midwest and across the country. Uh, uh, let me ask you, do you remember when uh, our buddy Jake Callahan uh, invited us to Phoenix, Arizona together to do that workshop? <laughs> man, that oh, was well. one of the highlights of my musical career. You mean to tell me, Jay, you're going to have me working with Dello? I mean, man, just tell me when I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> that was a wonderful time, man. I tell you, what a joy, what a joy, what an experience to, to learn from a master. And I still remember that song, that arrangement, uh, All Hail the Power of Jesus. Oh my, my, I my. I still remember that arrangement to this day. <laughs> yeah. But listen, I, I want to take a, take us back to when you first got interested and you knew that music would become your, your career, your life, and how you got started, you know, uh, uh, with your musical career, your training and, and education, all, all that you've done to get to today. Well, what many people don't know is that uh, my father was a church musician 
And I maybe I need to change that to he was a church plunker. <laughs> <laughs> and I, as a little boy, uh, just would hang around my father. And I remember very vividly that one Saturday night I said, you know, please teach me this piece. And he did it on a Saturday and on that Sunday. And I couldn't have been any more than maybe eight years old. I played it in church. And from that experience, that's where I, I started. Uh, my father saw that there was somewhat of a gift. And uh, he said, Let, let's send you somewhere to develop this. And I start studying music at uh, around the age of eight, taking uh, piano lessons, uh, learning to read music. And, and from that into high school, learning what choral music was about in high school and, and from high school to college. And, and there you are. So you 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 started, and you said your father. You, you sound like my grandfather. He was he was a church plunker. Yeah. <laughs> and, all right, now you dating yourself because you know we we ain't heard that in a long time. Uh, he was certainly a plunker, uh, <clears throat> but I um, tried to, in those days, um, contemporize what. He was doing, yeah, um, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, we belonged to a small church, yeah. And yeah. Um, in, in that small church, they allowed me to operate on them when I had not gone to medical school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, good analogy. well, listen, man, your your bio is impressive. Your educational background and all of the mileage that you have and, and the ground that you covered uh, uh, teaching and training in performing arts school, the public school system and on the university level and, and even working with, uh, I saw the plays and, and, and the musicals, all, all of what you did. Uh, man, how did that come about? Because for them to, to, to call you uh, ain't misbehaving and and Alice in Wonder, all of that stuff you've done, somebody had to notice that Dello Thatford was the man to call. Well, the, the one thing um, that I, I wanted to happen, and it has, is that I wanted to give an opportunity to other young African Americans to uh, learn more about music than just uh, the hip hop or even gospel, but that there was a, a gift that they had that was greater than that. And not being braggadocious, but I've had many young people, well, I have seen many young people lives turn around from just a, a, a street crooner to an world-renowned opera singer. In fact, I received uh, an email from one of my former students who made his debut with the Metropolitan Opera a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And um, he came from a Pentecostal background. Wow. And he said, I never knew anything about opera, but you introduced that style of music to me and changed my life. Did not change his witness, but it did change his life in mm -hmm. terms of his ability and gift that he is now presenting across the world. That's, that's awesome. That's, that's awesome. That's a credit to your, your investment and preparing yourself to share all that you learned and accumulated over the years. What a testimony. And uh, it, it's so wonderful that, that he's thought enough of you to, uh, 
to share with you because, you know, in this age, man, a lot of people, you know, they do their thing and they know they didn't get there on their own. They had to have a mentor or somebody and uh, they forget where they come from. But yeah, thank God. listen, man, they jumping in the comment. Oh my God, William Maurice Caldwell uh, taking us back to the, to the days of um, uh, uh, way back when we came along with the Caldwells and uh, Jimka and, and Holy yeah. Cross and all of that. Uh, we, we're just excited. Uh, I got somebody here, Banks. Banks, who is that? That jumped on in with us. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm excited, man. Uh, uh, Pastor Ralph Petty has joined us. Julius Dix from Buffalo, <laughs> from no, Rochester, New York, and uh, Queer Coleman Ward. Uh, thanks for coming into the comment into the comment section. So uh, uh, tell us, tell us more about you know you you you've been involved in the workshop. You're still involved in the workshop chapter rep. And and then your 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 local that massive choir that you you direct what's the name that it was it the symphonic choir uh, yes it, it is the gospel symphonic choir yes and, uh, um, it is a um, it's it's a actually a gospel choir but a choir that sings all genres of sacred music such yeah. as what Saint James used to do would yeah. sing all genres of sacred music at any given time and singing it well, well-prepared um, uh, anthems, spirituals, um, classical numbers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and I remember when I was talking with Dr. Mary Beth Gentry, we, we started reminiscing on when, um, Reverend Nix got with you and she told the story about at the workshop uh, when you all sung so late and Reverend said, I got to see about recording you all. And uh, we were fortunate to come by myself and Jeffrey LaValle, you know, Jeff came with Reverend Nix and man, that was a classic recording. Do you know, I still teach some of those songs to these folks. <laughs> Geraldine's song, uh, uh, you know, learn how to trust in Jesus. Joe Price, I mean, I, I'm going back now, you know, all of those wonderful songs. And 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 uh, when Dr. Gentry did uh, uh, "Oh Happy Day" and oh man, that was that was just, I mean, the music. I'm trying to think who did that arrangement of "Just as I Am." Dr. Doris Wilson. Yes, yes, yes. Dr. Man. Doris Wilson. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I remember those classic songs that, uh, and then you all did another recording later on, The Blood. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pastor Norman Owens, Norman Owens doing the, um, uh, the narration on the front of that. Man, I, I remember, I remember, man, those, those blessings to you, Penelope Walker, Gospel Music Workshop, Fred, uh, uh, Pastor Edward Davey, they come, you remember Edward Davey from, from Holy Cross? I, 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 yes, indeed. Man, yes, indeed. We, 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 I'm going to be interviewing him soon. We were talking about, I told him I was going to have you on and talking about those Holy Cross days uh, uh, when Jim Cook was going on and Pastor Porter was around then. And uh, man, that's going back to the progressive Baptist church days. Yeah. There. And who was it? You, Arnold, and and uh, who else? Was Joe was there too with, with you? Joseph but, and, and I, Ike Williams. Oh, man. Yes. We would, yeah. when Reverend told us, in rehearsal, all right, we planning. He gave us the date. We're going to St. Louis. Man, we was packing that night. <laughs> that was gonna happen two months later. <laughs> we, we love coming to St. Louis. And of course, 
back when Bill White, the radio station uh, broadcast was going on down there. And we just love it, man, uh, whenever we had opportunity to come to share at Progressive. Those and, pro and Progressive loved having you all, the St. James oh, Choir, man. coming uh, to Progressive. And not only Progressive, but the city of St. Louis. We yeah. love St. James. Yeah, man. I mean, that, that was like for a long time. Uh, one of our, we didn't go nowhere. We weren't going to St. Louis. We weren't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Reverend said, we got to include St. Louis on, on, on this tour trip. Man, we, we and you all hosted us just uh, so well. I mean, the, the fellowship, the love, I mean, and uh, um, it was it was just awesome. It was just awesome. Met a lot of lot of friends. Uh, thank God to this day, uh, those that are us that are still around. So many of them has gone on. Yes, and, uh, yes. But but we remember them in those days. You know, I, I think that's where we we found it. We met uh, Bishop Greenlee and uh, uh, Pastor uh, Ralph Petty now before we yes. came to Detroit, met him when we was doing the progressive fellowships. So many memories, man, and that choir. My God, my God, my God, if there was a choir that sang heaven's music on earth, progressive. I'm like, well, they don't need us <laughs> down here. My God, they, they do not need St. James down <laughs> here with this sound that they have and the music, the quorum, and the, 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 the I mean, the, the choice of you all's repertoire and the originality that we were gleaming. You know, JD, when we got back home, JD was always, JD would always call when we have our meetings and I hope you was clocking everything they did. I said, you know I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, believe say, me, we were heavily influenced by yes. St. James, heavily influenced, not only by the just the music, but the total package of yeah. how you dressed, how you carried yourself. What a church choir, the choir decorum, all of those kinds of things that made the full presentation and a, a, a really great package. To, to present to the church world. Yes, indeed. And we, now, we yeah, just- I'm, I'm losing you on your light a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it's my camera or yours. Uh, get back okay. in the light, get back in the light. There you go, there you go, it's coming back. Yeah, right there. Saying a verse and chorus, I shall not be moved. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. Yeah, Edward David. I mean, we we started reminiscing, and 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 when 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 Dr. Linton would come and preach on those Friday nights, man, we heard y'all was in town. We was coming, you know. I was I was I was young, sitting back there in the back of Holy Cross, you know, because Holy Cross had that Friday night live broadcast, mm -hmm. man, and that was one of the hot spots between Holy Cross and Burnett back in the day with their with their broadcast. Oh man, those those were some wonderful days. Thank you, William. Uh, uh, and he told me to tell you, hello, hello, Dr. Professor Thatcher. That's what he called him, y'all. Yeah. But listen, listen, tell me uh, uh, your workshop, your uh, GMWA connections and what you all have done in the St. Louis area because uh, St. Louis, to me, got to be one of the uh, leading innovative chapters in the convention that has been and still is today when it, when it comes to uh, the music and, and the numbers that you bring always uh, was bringing year after year after year to the convention. I mean, those numbers were impressive, you know. Uh, all chapters wasn't ready like that. Well, uh, the the other thing is that with the St. Louis chapter, we had 
What I also see happens with the Detroit chapter, the, the unity of the musicians such as Joseph yeah. Price, Anthony White, uh, the unity of those guys uh, and the energy that they bring yeah. uh, uh, is just um, unmeasurable. Uh, John Mann, the late John Mann and his brother, uh, all of that was a part of that. Renee Gilkey, all of those people. Oh, that man. was an energy that, that, that we had. And, um, and we loved each other. Uh, it, yeah. it wasn't a competitive spirit. It, it, it was a spirit of, um, of, of cooperation that just doesn't happen often with, yeah. in, in many of the music arenas. Yeah, well, y'all had it, man. I'm, I'm telling you. And you had solos, you had directors. Man, you mentioned Renee Guilty. Oh, God, that was, that was my sweetheart. I'd love... I'd be looking forward to see her at, at, at when we came to St. Louis <laughs> at all the conventions, her sister and all them, and as well as Mrs. Flowers. Man, I, re I remember Annette's mother, uh, Annette's mother. Yes, all, yes. All of those great souls, of course, Bill White and his wife and 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 the whole crew, just everybody. Uh, Quincy Fielding. Quincy Fielding. Yes, Quincy Fielding. How can I forget Mr. Wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> My God, yes, sir. Him and yeah. Me. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and for people that are listening to us, I'm not talking about Quincy Fielding, the, the young songwriter, and Quincy's not so young now, but yeah. I'm talking about his father. His father, Fielding, senior. senior. I mean, he was a maestro professor of music all by him. I used to love, he used to clown so bad. He used to get us all of the time. I mean, when 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 he'd catch us around Reverend Nixon them, he he had a way of telling you when it was right and when it was wrong. He had a absolutely he, absolutely he, it, it, I, I I can't explain it, but I remember one time I was playing something at the convention one time and and uh, he caught me coming off the stage. He said, now son, uh uh uh, uh that, that was okay, but now you know I know you you kind of missed a couple of couple of runs there. So he said, you know, I'm listening. And uh, uh I know you know better. I he said, I said, yes, sir. He said, sir. he just laughed, he was laughing while he was spanking me, you know, made me enjoy it. <laughs> but I, I thank God for, I mean, he was always like uh, like our convention dad and uh shoot man with me and Gregory Troy and all of us. Quincy, including all of us young cats, David Allen, man, when we might be running low on funds, uh, you know, we knew where we could go. Uh, <laughs> Dad Fielding and uh, him, uh, Reverend Cleveland and Reverend Nixon, Ed Smith. Listen, man, <laughs> we was on good, we was on so enough good terms. And so we, <laughs> we didn't have no problems at the workshop. And I tell people now, all uh, these young men, I, I am a workshop baby. I mean, I mean, I'm in my 60s, but I was a baby when it started. So uh, 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 thank God for, for those memories and all of those great men and women uh, who came through there, who unselfishly, like yourself. Man, I remember you threw, a, we was in St. Louis, and uh, you threw a spread at your house that we talked about after we left and all the way home on the bus. And so JD said, just shut up because everybody didn't get a chance to go. <laughs> and so, no, I say, I know he couldn't have the whole choir in the house, but man, I, I never forget those little things, those things, man, y'all, you put it on. They had some, it was food everywhere. We ate and uh, we just had great fellowship. And man, that, that's what we loved. And, and like I said, uh, you have set such a high standard in the St. Louis area and across the country for ministers of music and musicians. I mean, when we look at you and we 
hear your wisdom and, and we look and see how the Lord has blessed you. God has given you longevity. And a lot of these guys don't have that. I, I you know, and, and it amazes me, as talented as they are, as gifted as they are, is something, I don't know if it's their, their attitude, their ego, or uh, they come on the scene and then they're gone. But you got Adelo Thatcher who come on the scene, still on the scene, and going to be on the scene. You know, uh, Jay Callahan don't join us. He's <laughs> Jay Callahan. Hey, Jay, friend. that's my friend. Hey, Jay, Jay, what's happening? Elder <laughs> David Tate, bless you, my friend, my son. Uh, but yeah, uh, 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 what, what's up with that today, uh, 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 Dr. Thatcher? What, what do you think is happening in uh, the music community with uh, the individual artists and recording artists, songwriters, composers, ministers of music. I mean, it's just a different landscape. It's, it's something going on here. I don't know if it's in the water or what. Well, one thing I, I think that what we are lacking and, and what some of the young musicians are lacking is really a, a really good foundation. Oh, wow. and, and And a foundation that starts early to uh, uh, to help us in the development, in the growth, that it is not just about you. Mm -hmm. um, I was fortunate to to um, have a father who would say to me, um, "You have to watch your attitude. You have to be nice." You have to be kind. People don't have to listen to you nor ask for you. And what I find with some of these young people that we, we have talent, but we don't have a, um, a spirit of, of kindness. And um, it's difficult to find the two, the gift and meekness. Wow. I mean, if you can, if when you find that, the gift and meekness, you really have a wonderful musician. But, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and a lot of the churches are responsible for these young people feeling that way because they're paying such outrageous salaries to them and where both you and I really had to work up to where we were and yeah. where we are now, uh, even now uh, where I am. Um, so uh, to find the meekness and the gift, if you put the two together, you really have somebody wonderful in the music world. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of them are missing that because for whatever reason, they won't migrate to a uh, Delo Thatford. They, they think that there's something among their little rat pack or group, for lack of a better word, that they can glean from. And all of them are trying to get somewhere and none of them really know, you know, the, the steps to success mm -hmm. is humility and uh, integrity. i never forget something uh, Bishop Andrew Merritt here in Detroit, Straight Gate uh, Ministries International, he told me one time, he said, son, listen, a lot of people are, are gifted and talented, but don't ever let your gifts and talent take you where your character can't sustain you. Oh my God. Have, they don't my have integrity. <laughs> and, and, and people look at us now. I tell musicians all the time, I hope you got some time. Y'all y'all see me now and y'all, I did what I've done, thank God. But y'all need to know from whence I've come. You know, y'all need to know how I got to a place where when people call me, I, 
I, I don't have to say anything. It's out of respect for my history and my record, thank God, that uh, they automatically know how to treat me without me asking really now in these days. And like I said earlier, and that's because I'm still living on residual. Yes. You know, when I think about Maceo Woods and all of them that, that, that had hands on me, Donald Vales, all, all of them, Community Youth Ensemble, Dorgan Needham. I mean, I can just go down the line. Thomas Whitfield, everybody that 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 contributed to my success. When I try to tell these young musicians, you know, this didn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, it took years and study and, and learning and practicing and, and uh, gleaming and being taught, sitting at the feet of the masters who, who allowed me the opportunity. And so my next question to you is, do you find that in your area or at St. Louis where this generation is for whatever reason, uh, slow to migrate to a mentor such as yourself when you try to bridge that gap and create that relationship, you know, the kind of, you're really helping them if they understood to have a Dr. Dello Thatford to be available, to, to mentor you, to talk to you and give you wise counsel, you can't pay for that. You ain't gonna get that in no school. Right. <laughs> you know? right. And, and do you find that be, uh, uh, like pulling teeth today? I, I find that that is true in some cases, but then we have some young people that are, uh, are looking, um, that will look up to someone like me. And I don't want, want them to necessarily look up to me other than that I can help them um, in how to actually have a real church music program. Yeah. And a, a well thought out church program that takes you through the liturgical calendar where you sing the proper music for the liturgical calendar. Like most of these young people right now, if I say to them, you know, we're getting ready to go into Advent. So we need to sing music pertaining to Advent. And then after Advent, yeah. we will sing Christmas, but Christmas yeah. doesn't happen until the 25th of Christmas. So not even knowing about the, the liturgical calendar, um, um, which will uh, help them have a tremendous music program. Again, I go back to St. James where St. James always did whatever the liturgical calendar called for musically. That's what we heard from yeah. hymns to anthems to spirituals. Yeah, and I, I used to, when I did workshops, the Reverend taught me, I always took a, uh, uh, most of the time took a hymn book with me depending on where I was going. He said, when you meet with the musicians and directors, tell them this is one of their greatest helpers. If you get lost, look in the back of the hymn book. Absolutely. The communion songs, the baptism songs, you know, all of the songs that are you know, categorized and they're, they got, they're some of them, they're in alphabetical order and you can find the, pro, you know, the proper hymn. Now, what you just said, liturgical, some of these musicians probably on here today ain't, don't even know what that is. <laughs> they ain't thought about no Christian calendar and getting prepared for, for, for Advent and Christmas and Easter and Ash Wednesday and all of the celebrations that the church should adhere to, you know, on an annual basis. They, they don't know nothing about that. You know, and, they, and, and they really need to because the, the young ministers now are seminary trained. Yeah. And so when they come from the seminary, uh, you need to be somewhat compatible yeah. with what the seminary trained minister 
is doing as well. Yeah. Yes. Providing, providing, because I, I know a couple of them that came through here. They didn't last long in Detroit. Detroit's a music town. Some of them, I, I don't know if they they trying to keep up with the Joneses or they saw something on Facebook or YouTube that caught their eye and they decide they want to change things and go another way under the guise of attracting this generation, but they forgot about the generation and the generations of members that, that are, are, are in their ministry or in their church, you know, cause here in Detroit, I know one church in particular, I won't call their name. They still got senior citizens and senior choir, matter of fact, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the old term, the pastor's course, you know, they, they still got these, these age groups in the church and, and, and some young people, but, uh, uh, I was telling one pastor when I was growing up, they used to give the pastor an ordination, a robe, a Bible, and a hymn book. Exactly. You know, some of them, some of them are musically inclined, or uh, they're kind of versed and know how to share or to lead their minister music in a music program, and they can work hand in hand. But a lot of them. Today, uh, they don't even too much put a lot of emphasis on that. They just want a musician to play behind them while they're hollering. And, uh, <laughs> and, and it's all about them. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, they don't want, they don't want, some of these pastors don't want no good choir. They just want a choir just to render music. But they better not sing too good. No, we don't want no shouting off that music. No. <laughs> Won't nobody getting excited because the choir singing. I remember years ago, Reverend Nix told us in one of our meetings, he would meet with us often, if not at the house or at the church. You know, he would say, he told JD, he said, man, Wood, we just got off the road. We tired. I want y'all Sunday to sing everything y'all know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, he told us, he said, if y'all sing them, y'all get them going and bake that cake. I put the icing on it. Uh, let the <laughs> Lord give me a word to preach and, and to share with the people. And then a lot of times he would, he would, he would say to us, because I asked him, I said, Reverend, why, why sometime when you get up, you will choose to sing something that we might have sung, you know, two or three Sundays in a row. He said, Woods, because uh, you just never know how the spirit is going to lead. And uh, with all of the services we have, you just never know. Somebody needs to hear it if they haven't heard it or somebody needs to hear it again. <laughs> and I tell you, I lie not to you. Every time he called for a song, if he didn't come over there and play it, of course, you know, Reverend, that's all it took for the church to see him come over there and get on that organ. Oh, well, yes, indeed. It was over. I mean, it was it was over. And and every now and then he would treat us to that. I'd be looking for, I'd be looking over there a lot of time at the chest. Okay, come on now, you know, JD done, <laughs> he done pulled out one of the adult choir originals, you know. Uh, uh, and uh, but he would come over there, man. And and they would pull that song out and 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 it would be just what the Lord ordered. And he was gifted and anointed to know how to get up and tag the song. He said, I had something else to preach. But the Lord has come in here today and he just keep on going. And it that was just it. You know, and I appreciate, I appreciate that tutorage and, and that wisdom to watch somebody not only could tell you what to do and how to do it, but he could show you how to do it. That, that, that was the blessing. That was the blessing. The, the, the other thing I want to say is that I was just so amazed with the senior talent in Detroit. Yeah. He, people like uh, Elma Hendricks, Lucille Lemon. Yeah. Um, 
Harold Smith. Is that that's what is that, 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 that that's him? You know, there are not many cities that had those kinds of of music people. Donald Vale. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Detroit. A lot of those guys came from up under Alma Hendricks. Uh, I was a baby when Donald came to Detroit, me and James Moore, with the Community Youth Ensemble. You know, Donald Bales, Dorgan Needham, Ralph, all those great new church musicians that she groomed, uh, Columbus Man, recorded, I mean, uh, Sandra Fever, uh, all of them that came out of there that went on to do other musical things, you know, Sandra's song with Aretha Franklin and and uh, Columbus Man had his own recording choir and uh, uh, Ralph Long played for some of everybody around the world. I mean, Gregory Brown, some of everybody, of course we know Dorgan's history and Donald's history and uh, those musicians. And she was at a, a very stellar prominent church, Greater New Mount Moriah back in the day. And she had, one of the largest women's courses in the country, largest. And we would travel uh, to, to Memphis every year. She took me and Gregory with her to play when they would travel and do concerts. She was Maddie Clark's publisher, Alma and Carl's Music. She had really? the publishing company here in Detroit where everybody went to to get their music published. She had the record shop. She had the music store. She had the publishing company. She had the community choir. And she had the music school. She owned <laughs> practically the whole block. <laughs> I'm telling you. She was an entrepreneur before we was using the word entrepreneur. You know, she was a businesswoman as well as a charismatic musician and a musician and director and composer in her own right. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And, and a, a director that once you saw her direct, you would never forget it. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, we remember those days. And, and, and she was community. Uh, she would pack us up in that old blue Ford station wagon. We didn't have to buy no robes. She bought the robes for the choir. Just grab one and put it on. Them blue trumpet sleeve, short skin robes. I never forget them. <laughs> you know, and she hauled us around the city to sing for everybody. I mean, back then we were doing convalescent homes, senior citizens homes, hospitals, uh, churches, banquets. I mean, if they called her, she she invite and, and shared the opportunity to bring the choir. And then, of course, they did the recording, How Big Is God? And she was a hymn person. Oh, yes. She was a hymn person. And uh, those were some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful days. Bless you, Roosevelt, Joyce Holman, and Alvin Ford Sr. I mean, they come in in the comment section. Uh, but listen, uh, uh, tell us, tell us how you pulled together when when Reverend said he wanted to do the recording with with East Saint was East Saint Louis and Saint Louis chapter. Y'all kind of came together and. The, the, the organizational structure that you had. When we came, we were just so amazed at the, not only the music, the compositions that were presented, but the, the uniformity and the camaraderie, the organization of you guys. And I know that that came from you. How did you pull all of these great minds talents and gifts together uh, to decide what actually was going to be recorded on that live session? Well, my philosophy in, in church music or any music, and particularly when we start talking about uh, a community group as such as like the workshop, is that it's not a solo effort from just Delo Fedbo. And there are many musicians that it's just a solo, it's just them. But I have surrounded myself 
since my early days with competent, competent musicians and not only musicians, but business people such as the name I had called John Mann, you called Eula Flowers. Eula Fra Flowers was a principal that had organizational structure that was second to none. Mm. And I had those kinds of people in my organization and I allowed them to work. I, I, and, and when you allow people to work in their, in their area and to stay in their lane, you can get some things done. It's when you start micromanaging yeah. that you many times uh, will, will have problems. And, and so uh, I, I loved people and I still love people and they love me because I love them. I love the Lord and the Lord has just given me the insight of what to do and how to do. Even now uh, with my church, it, it is that I, I surround myself with some talented young musicians, but they have respect for me. And the, the real thing that I wanna say is that the musicians, in order to be successful, you're gonna have really have to love the Lord. Yeah, yeah. That that's 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 awesome. And 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 I think what you said, I pray that those who have community choirs and and in that same kind of position will listen to that wise counsel, surrounding yourself with people uh and not micromanaging. Right. No, they stay in their lane and and uh, they take care of what their responsibilities are and they make, make this thing happen. Uh, Alvin Ford Sr., blessings to you. He, he made a comment, he was talking about some of these musicians feel like they have arrived. So uh, it's hard to give them inst instructions now. I find that happening here because uh, this group that I organized, the Fellowship of of music and arts, uh, we I wanted I wanted to teach on the music business and to help musicians and artists with their their writing, their arranging, and uh, because the Lord has given me longevity in the in the industry as an artist and a writer, I've been blessed to get some things out there, and I think a lot of times they think volume is is impressive. No, the quality is more uh, important than quantity. Yes, you, know, you don't have to have a lot of song, and I, and I and I use myself as as an example to teach them and to tell them, you know, uh, uh, you just need to uh, prepare your hearts because my challenge today is write some new hymns. Then, if, if y'all don't like the ones, ask the Lord to anoint you to write one. Ask the Lord to anoint you to write another anthem or, you know, they wrote them then. So uh, why are we still singing those songs? Because they're still good songs. And here is my Absolutely. thing. I tell them, Dello, first of all, the gospel message is not dated. It don't have an expiration date on it. No, sir. No, so sir. I treat the music in the same vein. The music, if it's a good song, it do not expire. You know, I know the music industry, what they're trying to do, they want to get volume out because it's money to them. They want to get that publishing money and, and make money on sales and, and uh, give the artists a, a little tip. But uh, we, know, we know what that game is all about. Yes, but my sir. thing has been over the years is there are so many musicians and uh, talented singers, directors, composers, who may not never get a stellar award, who may not never get a dub or a Grammy, or may not, they got a whole lot of other new uh, uh, gospel music awards uh, 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 shows and, and programs going on now. You may not ever get none of that, but that does not mean you're not relevant because uh, musicians matter. If you take all of the qualified musicians 
uh, uh, of course, we're in this pandemic. Some churches are in and some are not. But let all the musicians stay home on any given Sunday and see what happens to that. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about in the black church. You let, <laughs> yes, sir. You let the minister of music, the organist, the pianists, and let the, just let everybody take a day. <laughs> At the same time, across the country, and and see what happens. <laughs> you know, you know they'll be saying the devil done, done got in them. No, you know, and 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 let me let me ask you this because this this has been a conversation that some pastors do not like to have, and uh, and when they call me, even now I've done some things privately and virtually for some churches and their music ministries with the pastor. And I asked him, are y'all sure y'all want me? Because I'm not, I'm not going to pull no punches. I'm just going to tell you. They asked me about my growing up and my experience at St. James and all that. But you know what I tell them? That, that's what I said. I told one pastor, he got upset. The next highest salary in the church ought to be the minister of music. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he said, why you say that? I said, because they see him or her more than you. That's right. I mean, that's right. Your, and if you got you entrust one of the largest groups, they don't call them auxiliaries no more. They, you know, they sophisticated they call them ministries now. Thank yes. you. Well, that's nice. That's beautiful. <laughs> Whatever you want to call them, most most churches that got viable music ministries or departments, the numbers outweigh. Any other organization, sometimes they got a lot of ushers and nurses, but the choir is the biggest ministry auxiliary in the church most of the That's time. right. That's you right. Know, I've known some churches that have two and three and four hundred people just in the music ministry. Mm -hmm. Some churches got more people in their music department than some churches got members. That's right. And so right. the minister of music, you want us to be full time. You want them to be at your beck and call. You want them to do the funerals. You want them to do Sunday school, music for this, music for that, cover all the choirs. You got 20 choirs, which aim with four Sundays in a month. But you want, you got, you got, and some of them have graduated to, to a fine arts department where they got drama, they got a liturgical dance. They, they got all this kind of stuff now. They got the spoken word. They got poetry and uh, gospel rap. They, they got a whole gamut of things. And so I'm like, well, that minister of music who's got to head all of this needs to have the highest salary under the pastor. Now that's just me. <laughs> a lot of pastors, they, they frown, their eyebrows go up when I say that. I say, but it's important. I say, if you don't believe it's important, try to have a month worth of service and no music. That's right. See That's how right. they be looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you want some music yourself with your no singing self. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, they, they, they said we, we shouldn't have called him. <laughs> but uh, uh, I thank God because your voice, your voice of influence, uh, I'm sure you've lost count of the students and the numbers of people that have been under your teaching and uh, your influential voice to lead them career-wise or to counsel them vocally or as musicians or songwriters. Uh, I mean, man, it's, it's, I know you probably can't even remember each and every one student, uh, whether you were private students or vocal coach them. And I, I saw that in your bio, all of the things that you have done uh, uh, what has been one of your most memorable times in, in your, your teaching career? I, I, I would say um, the most memorable one was when, we, when I had an opportunity to present a young man uh, that was a um, tremendous singer. Uh, and we were asked to sing with the St. Louis Symphony at Christmas. And I was trying to find a number that uh, would uh, show his abilities. I couldn't. So I wrote a piece, a piece entitled Mary Had a Baby. 
And uh, uh, we did that choral piece with a bass baritone solo with the St. Louis Symphony. And uh, it, it was just a wonderful opportunity, a, a standing ovation from an all black high school choir um, in the paper the next day. And from that point, that young man received a scholarship from wow. just that one experience. And, and I'll never forget it, never forget it. Yeah, yeah. Those kind of things are so noteworthy. And it's a credit uh, uh, to your, your leadership, your influence and your teaching. And now you say you wrote a composition. See, that's what I'm talking about. I just <laughs> said, it. you musicians that listen, y'all listen to Dr. Thatcher, you know, and, you know, I, I learned that, you know, working early and looking at uh, all of the musicians in Detroit. Um, that's one of the things that, that, that I am so appreciative of, to be exposed to that kind of training and teaching, where when we would do concerts, you know, we didn't want to do top 40. We didn't want to mimic nobody. Because why do the concert if you're going to sing with somebody else? If they already know what you're going to sing for you, <laughs> yeah. people come. And that's what I loved about uh, Oh Give Thanks with St. James. You know, J.D. was a writer. Reverend was a writer and arranger. I mean, all of the songs that were birthed. And, and J.D. was so masterful that he could take and make an arrangement of something and just make it, make it his, make it the choir's or he would take a short after, and i never forget when he brought uh, 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 Where Shall I Go? Uh, Velma Willis sung that, the late Velma Willis, and um, uh, and then we recorded it, you know. I never thought we'd get a chance to record that. Then we had, we recorded an original anthem type song written by one of our young musicians, uh, Brian Preston, you know. I mean, all of the, 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 the uh, variety, and and I called out I, I called it the dream team, man. I, I you know, because we had so much musical talent on staff. Oh there, yeah, uh, yes. at, at St. James, you know, and um, uh, Reverend 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 always told us, you know, that we're not in competition with each other, and um, anything we needed to know, I mean. He would have me down in the church on Tuesdays before rehearsal. And I mean, you know, I, I can go on and on and on and on and on the experiences. And then he exposed me to people like yourself. He introduced me uh, to every, everywhere he went, he took me, you know, and I counted that a privilege. And, and uh, that's how I met you. And, 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 and that's how we came to St. Louis. And the rest is history. Praise <laughs> God for that, man. So listen, I, I need you to um, uh, talk to our, well, let me ask you this before that. How do you see church music today? Have we fumbled the ball? Have we dropped the ball on keeping sacred music sacred in our churches? Uh, have we allowed too much worldly influence as opposed to influencing the world? Have we become so dramatic now we got we got choreography in the choir stand and we got we got dancing directors and uh sometimes i don't know if they uh they trying to land a plane or what are they really called or what they doing and and my thing has been the other last thing uh, i put on this question i stopped going to musicals before the pandemic because Half the time, I couldn't hear them for looking at them, you know. And I pose this to everybody I talk to. What's up with that? What 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 can we do to get back to getting a handle on letting the church be the church and get all this performance and entertainment out of there? Well, the, the, the first thing is that I, I wish we would go back to really having choirs opposed to just praise teams and then there's there's nothing better than a, a choir and and it doesn't we don't have to go back to 
the 50 and 100 voice singers, but certainly an ensemble of singers um, uh, that that is just not a, um, a background singers to a soloist. Uh, if we could get back to singing choir music and and carrying ourselves, uh, we don't have to do everything that the world does. Right. And, and um, I think that we are influenced more and more by what happens in the world. Um, but uh, getting back to, to, to real choir music and, and what's pleasing to the Lord. <laughs> Appropriate, sacred, absolutely. Church. I mean, because some of my friends, I mean, before now, you know, I still know my boys in the hood and like uh, the hand car wash I would go to, I guy owned barbershops, they all, you know, and I'll tell my little my boy, I said, y'all come, come visit. I said, church, just come, just come, you know. <laughs> and they would tell me, he said, man, I, I went to a couple of places and um, uh, compared it to what y'all was doing. He said, man, somebody, I don't know whether I was at the club or where, you know, the girls, were, <laughs> the girls were, they would say, girls were slamming, doc. I said, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and that's the other thing, the, the, the dress codes, the decorum. And you know, I tell people now, I, I told this pastor in his music department, we would did a private Zoom. I said, you know, McDonald's got uniforms. Right. Wendy's, <laughs> they, they make them wear uniforms. Uh, and, uh, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, I mean, churches, I mean, you know, Popeye, everywhere you go, they, they are in uniform, but you come to church and we supposed to be singing the Lord's song and representing him. You know, these girls, they want to take off their shoes. I'm, I don't want to look at nobody's feet. I don't, these boys don't want to wear socks. I don't want to see nobody's ankles. And now they're wearing the flood and skinny leg suits and pants and all. I don't want to, I mean, all what? In other words, the world, the fashion world on down. Some of these folk, they got tattoos everywhere, but under the bottom of their feet, they start these piercings. I'm talking about church folk now. Right, right. You know, church folk. I mean, right. they're, they're mutilating their bodies. And we're supposed to look at that, you know, and then they come to church and expose and all of that. Their arms are out. Their backside is out. We're looking at everybody's name on their back and arms and, <laughs> and down <laughs> their legs. You know, they got all kind of uh, signs and, and tattoos. And they're up there gyrating and their pants are too. I, you know, I, I, I told the last choir I was working with, you know, y'all walk around for the offering and uh, I'm on top telling them to pass the plate <laughs> because some of this stuff is just indecent, you know, it, it, and, and I, some choirs are trying to get back to the robes and all that, but, but what do you think happened to us that we, was it us start allowing this stuff? And, and let down the standard, what, what's, what, what happened? Well, uh, you know, I, I, a, a lot of it, and I hate to, excuse me, I hate to say this, is many of the pastors are trying to conform to what's happening out in the world. Okay. And, and, and try, and when I say what's happening in the world, it's to attract people where they don't come to church and feel that they're being bored by discipline. But you cannot be disciplined. You cannot beat it in, in whatever area you're in. And uh, um, the church has just become a very undisciplined place in the yeah. music department. Yeah, and, and I know there was some young pastors, they did a panel of pastors in one of the uh, Baptist districts here. And a lot of the young guys, you know, felt insulted at the uh, Baptist council that they have here because they were trying to tell them, you know, explain why you tore up your father's church or your the church you inherited and you 
pulled out the pool grid, you pulled out the choir stand, you put in floodlights and spotlights, and you made a stage. And you don't have chairs in the pulpit. They either sit on the floor, they're off to the side. Now that seems to be the latest thing. And you got a, a, a podium on wheels. So, so you, and you got this huge, you know, neon backdrop. Everything is going. So you, we're at, we're at a performing arts center as opposed to the church. A place you know? of worship, exactly. Yeah. And, and I saw something on Facebook that really bothered me was somebody had posted a split picture. One side said the club and the other side said the church. And can I tell you, they both look the same <laughs> with the spotlights and, the, and all of that, you know. And, and I'm saying, wow, even the per people in the secular world are noticing that the yes. church is losing her influence when we should be the lights and we should be the salt, you know, of, of the world. And um, we, can't, we can't get people in and get them to sing the Lord's song. Uh, and some people are like that. How can we strange, sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Well, we know this world has, has become a strange place, but we've still got to sing his music, his song, the song that give adoration and praise to him. And then lastly, you touched on something that we've been talking about is how some churches have made monsters out of these praise leaders. They, they pan them. They sing everything. But here's my problem with them, Dr. Thatcher. I can go along with some of that to a degree, but I had a bad experience. Maybe everybody have had this experience. The praise leader was up just fussing at us. Clap your hands, touch your neighbor, give them a high five, run around the church, hug your neighbor. Y'all get with us, all that. I'm like, okay, I'm getting ready to go. Cause if you go ahead on and sing, instead of fussing, I might get with you. Right. <laughs> and then don't be singing the same song for 20 and 30 minutes long. Absolutely. And then you want us to stand up all that time. Get up, <laughs> get up on your feet. No, ask me to get up, don't, you know. I mean, some of them are just, just gone with this thing. They done got addicted <laughs> to that microphone. <laughs> and they're just jumping up and running all around the pulpit in the area where the, they call it the stage now or the platform. they just running from side to side and you're going to get a crook in your neck trying to follow them because they just, to me, they're just doing too much. Yeah. And to me, it becomes flesh on parade as opposed to worship to God. Now, that's, yes. that's just me. I mean, they call me old school, but I can't help it. <laughs> You know, I just can't help it. Yeah. Now, what, what do you say to this, to these things? <laughs> <laughs> what do we say to these things? Uh, <clears throat> well, the church has to remain the church. Yeah. That's, and, and, um, and so when we have music leaders that are not really church, people but giggers that makes the difference yeah and yeah. Uh, a, a person that saying that i'm doing this this is a gig and that's essentially what they make it let me see how how i can make this gig a little different more than the last gig yeah but the church has to remain the church has to remain the church. And that's why our music leaders have to be church, truly church people. As I said earlier that they have to be people that really love the Lord and where the Lord has done something in their lives that it shows that he has done something in their lives. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. Well, listen, I'm not going to keep you all night, but what, I, what I'd like for you to do, you've been, been so gracious, is to take a minute and uh, share a word of wisdom to encourage this generation of up and coming music uh, directors and songwriters and those who are aspiring to 
uh, take over music departments or, or become a candidate to be hired in that position to lead a music ministry and to know how to put a program together that will glorify God. Just take a minute and, and share your wisdom with us. Well, uh, again, and I think that what I have said many times this evening is that, um, first of all, we need to try and get our personal lives together in terms of the commitment that we have, <coughs> excuse me, the commitment that we have made to the Lord we have to be committed to him first. And then after that, seek the Lord um, in the direction that he would have you to go. A lot of this foolishness that's taking place, there ain't no God in it anywhere. But if you seek the Lord and ask him, uh, for directions, I mean, in, in, in everything that we do, we pray and ask God to lead us. And that's what really has, that's the missing piece with a lot of the young musicians, a gift without a real true commitment to Christ. And once we get that commitment to Christ, I think then it, it will change our thinking, how we think, how who we respect, and and uh, it, it will take them a, a really will take them far. Again, a gift without humility is not much, but when you have humility and a gift, it's going to take you a long way. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you all, you heard it from the man himself, and, and, and I tag all of those who I know with such longevity, uh, a humble man. You're talking about a Holy Ghost field, skilled professional, Dr. Dello Hatford. You've heard it from, from him tonight. Man, I appreciate you so much, and we got to stay connected and communicate. Uh, even in the midst of all of this that we're going through, I'm looking forward to the day all of this will be lifted and we'll be safe and we can bring the choir back. You know, uh, I was I was questioned about what am I doing? Uh, I've been blessed to get on here and make myself useful to the kingdom some kind of way. And and this this program is birthed out of I don't know if I'd be doing if it, if this if it wasn't for the pandemic. Thank God for, for him downloading to me uh, something of this nature. And then the other reason I thank God I'm doing it because a lot of, you, a lot of our stories have been untold. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like you shared tonight, this will be saved. It's going to be on our YouTube channel and uh, uh, Fellowship of Music and Arts. And people can go back and hear uh, just something about the Dello Thatford journey and his story to get an idea of who the man is behind the music, the making of the man and his music and his journey. Uh, a, a lot of times we just don't know people's story. Like that song out, they say, you, you see my glory, but you don't know my story. Yes. So I appreciate you for, for sharing your story tonight and sharing wisdom with us across the board. And I pray that even some pastors will grab hold to some of this information and wisdom and uh, can share it with their music staff and uh, they're trying to grow and to groom this next generation uh, of uh, great men and women in the church when it comes to sacred music that glorifies God. Listen, man, I'm going, I'm going to pray for us tonight before we leave. And let me first of all, thank all of you for being so kind to join us in the comment section. If you miss any part of this, it'll be on the Fellowship of Music and Arts Facebook page. And then you can go to our YouTube channel and go back and reference it and uh, you can pause it, stop, and, and watch it as many times as you want to. 
But do me a favor, uh, like and share it. And then once you get a hold of it, put it on your page and share it with your Facebook family and friends. And then also uh, send it to those that, that, that might need to hear uh, these words of wisdom from a master. All right, we're gonna pray now before we go. Father, we thank you for this shared time Jesus. with one of your choice blessed servants in the person of Dr. Delo Thatcher. We thank you for his life. We thank you for the gift that you've given him. You've anointed him and you've blessed him over the years, God, to make music and melodies unto you. Thank God for, for his journey from whence he come, God, and preparing himself, educating and preparing himself to teach and to train. We thank you, God, for the fruits of his labor, all of the students, God, all of those who have witnessed uh, his witness, God, in his musical teaching and training. We thank you for the influence you, upon his life. And we continue to pray that you will allow that same influence to grow and go beyond where it's come to this day. God bless him now as he continues to teach and to train and to be a witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ through music. Bless him now. We pray the prayer of Psalms 90 and 17 upon his life. Now, Lord, and let the beauty of the Lord, our God, be upon him. Establish the work of thy hands upon him. Yea, the work of thy hands, establish thou it. God, we pray that whatsoever his hand shall touch, you will cause it to prosper. Bless him now physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, financially. And if there's a need in his life right now, we pray you supply all of his needs according to your riches and glory. Now go before him and make easy and successful his way, we pray in Jesus' name, amen, and thank God. Man, we bless you tonight, and we are certainly going to believe God. We're going to hear some more music, some more original compositions, and uh, we're just looking for how God is going to continue to bless you, because you are a blessing to us, and we appreciate and love what God has done in you, what he's done with you, what he's done for you. And we're still looking for God to do more through you that we might continue to be blessed. Thank you tonight and bless all of you. And listen, man, we'll stay in touch. We'll stay connected. Uh, so we won't lose touch. We got to communicate. Yes, sir. Uh, all right. Appreciate you so much. Bless all of you. This is Bishop Andre Wood say, I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. That is my prayer until next week this time. We say we love you with the love of Christ. Good night.